Recently, one of my YouTube viewers got in touch asking me if I could make him a small desk tidy as a commission. The desk tidy would hold ink bottles, pens, and it would also have a drawer to hold his mobile phone, wallet, and keys. He also mentioned that he'd liked my recent chess set and wedding box builds, and he was happy to let me design something. So here's what I came up with as a concept. The client was happy with the design, and he sent me one of his ink bottles for reference to get the sizing right, and also this beautifully handwritten letter. For materials, I'd use these offcuts of mahogany, which were left over from the wedding box build, and some pieces of 18mm spruce plywood. I started by cutting the plywood roughly to the size of the mahogany pieces. These pieces of ply will be stacked up and laminated together to get the box to the required depth. I used the table saw for the rip cuts and the mitre saw for the cross cuts. The pieces of mahogany would form the front and back of the box. I cleaned up the faces with a hand plane to get them nice and smooth. And then I could glue up the pieces using wood glue and some bar clamps. I let that dry overnight and then I could remove the clamps. I scraped off as much of the glue as possible using a cabinet scraper and then cleaned up one face of the block with my hand plane. That gave me a flat surface to reference against my table saw fence so that I could clean up the opposite side on the table saw. I did this in multiple passes, raising the blade each time and the blade didn't quite reach to the center, so I finished off flattening it with the hand plane. I used a steel ruler to make sure that it was flat. Then I cleaned up the front and back faces of the block. Next I could mark up the shape I wanted the box to be using a bevel gauge to mark up a taper. I rounded over the corners using a cap from a bottle. So now I had the block prepared ready to start making the bandsaw box. And I've only ever made one bandsaw box and that was a couple of years ago and it was featured as a video on my channel and it didn't go particularly well. But since then I got a new bandsaw and I learned how to set it up properly and also I found a good supplier of really good quality blades. I usually use a 12mm wide 3 or 4 tooth per inch blade on my bandsaw and it stays on there all of the time. It's good for ripping and it can also manage some fairly tight curved cuts. But as this bandsaw box is quite small and with some quite tight curves, I decided to order a narrower blade. So I ordered a six millimeter three TPI blade. I thought that would be narrow enough to cut the curves that I wanted, but with a low enough TPI to manage cutting through what was quite a thick block. Last time I made a bandsaw box, I had issues with blade drift and I've since learned why that is. I was using too high a TPI blade and I'll link to a video by Mattis Wendell in the description box below, which will explain that far better than I ever could. So after swapping my 12mm 4 TPI blade with a 6mm 3 TPI blade and setting up the tension, tracking and guide bearings, I was then ready to start cutting out the shape of the box. Here you can see that the low TPI blade doesn't leave a particularly clean cut but the main thing was that I wasn't getting blade drift, so I was happy so far. I used a block plane and hand plane to refine the shape of the box, rounding over the corners to match the markings that I'd made. Next I did a rip cut on the bandsaw to create the back panel of the box. And then I could mark up the shape of the drawer onto the front panel, which I set in about 8mm from the edges. 
I started to make that cut on the bandsaw and this is where I had problems. I had planned to make two exit cuts, one on each side of the box which I could later glue together to form the carcass, but when I got here I realised that the blade was not going to let me cut as tight a curve as I needed, so I ended up making an exit cut here as well. Then I cut the rest of the shape out and fortunately this time I managed to cut the curve on the other side of the box without any issues. So here's what I have now for the carcass, a left panel, the right and bottom panel as one piece, a top panel and the back panel, and the block that will later form the drawer. Before working on the drawer I decided to put the carcass together just to make sure it would work out ok as I was a bit worried I might have ruined it at this point. I cleaned off the bandsaw blade marks on the belt sander, and also flattened where the glue joints would be. Then I glued together that exit cut that wasn't meant to happen. I used masking tape and some clamps to hold it while the glue dried. And once the glue had set I then glued on the top panel and applied a couple of bricks to get a nice tight glue joint. Next I started working on the drawer, first cleaning off the bandsaw blade marks, then I ripped the front and back panel of the drawer at the bandsaw. And then after cleaning up the drawer front, I then marked up the shape of the drawer. I cut out that shape on the bandsaw and this time the cuts went really well. I sanded the inside of the drawer using my random orbit sander and also an electric file for the curves. Then I glued on the front and back panel to form the drawer. There were a few voids in the plywood pieces that made up the drawer, so I mixed up some epoxy and applied some masking tape to the inside of the drawer and then filled them on the outside of the drawer. The tape was there on the inside just to stop it leaking through. Then I did some sanding to clean up the carcass and glued on the back panel. I sanded at 80 and then 120 grit using power sanders and then 240 grit by hand. I also eased over the sharp edges to make it more comfortable to touch. I decided to make some legs for the box using some more mahogany. I cut some small pieces to the same size as the depth of the box and then I used my hand plane to put a bevel on each side to give the legs a tapered look. And the position of the legs also meant that the exit cut I made on the bandsaw earlier that wasn't meant to be there would be hidden, which was a nice bonus. I fired in a couple of brad nails to secure the legs, making sure to choose a nail size that wouldn't break through to the inside of the box. And I also stamped on my maker's mark to the bottom. I wanted the drawer front to be flush with the front of the carcass, so I used a combination of a hand plane with the grain of the wood and a chisel to clean up the cross grain at the sides of the box until it was all flush. Next I started working on the top part of the box and again I used some offcuts of mahogany. I first squared up the edges at the table saw and mitre saw and then used a hand plane to clean up the faces. First I would make the trays for the ink bottles to sit in. The bottles measured just over 55mm wide. I marked up a centre point and then working from that centre point outwards I marked up the spaces for three of the ink bottles. The plan here was to cut the waste where the bottles would be and then reassemble it with wood glue so that the wood grain matched nicely. 
So I ripped the first piece and then realised that I hadn't accounted for the kerf of the blade, so I needed to extend the markings I'd made by about 3mm and then I could cut the centre piece free. I checked the width of that centre piece and the measurement was 56mm which was perfect. So then I could cut out the dividers using my crosscut sled. And after cutting the final piece I could then reassemble it using wood glue and masking tape. You can see here that I numbered each divider so that I knew which order to place them in. Then I cleaned it up on the belt sander. I applied glue and positioned it where I wanted it. Next I'd make the pen tray and this would be assembled with mitre joints. I first ripped three thin strips of mahogany at the table saw and then cut a 45 degree angle on one end of each piece. Then I offered up what would be the front piece of the pen tray to mark it up at the same length and I cut it to length and just checked that it was okay. Then I measured for length of the side pieces, marked them up and cut them to length. I could then glue the pieces in place and I used a scrap piece of plywood to distribute the weight evenly from my brick. I cleaned up the joints with my block plane and I also rounded over the front pieces of both the pen and the ink trays. After a bit more sanding and blowing away the dust I then applied some boiled linseed oil. I tried not to get the oil on the bottom of the inside of the trays as this is where the felt will later be glued and I wasn't sure it would stick so well to oiled wood. I got some of this red felt and cut it with a knife to fit inside the trays. I used epoxy to glue the felt in place. and I used a block of wood to push it down and then I applied some weight. For the ink trays I used the offcuts to clamp down the felt until the glue dried. I applied some clear brie wax to the drawer and the box. I thought this might help the drawer to slide better and it did seem to help, but I later added a bit of candle wax to the sides and bottom of the drawer and that worked better. I wanted to find a small brass handle and this was the smallest I could find at 20mm in diameter. I found this in a shop called Wilkinson's in the UK. The bolt was a little too long so I cut it down to length with a hacksaw. Then I marked up a centre point, drilled a hole and fitted the handle. After a final buffing of the wax I could then package up the box and send it to the client. He received it a few days later and sent me these photos. So here are some photos of the finished item and this project took around 15 hours to complete.